As I do occasionally, I'd like to start off with a little bit of a, a theology uh, lesson, very brief, of course, because today's gospel, primarily part of the Last Supper discourse, as I already mentioned, Jesus talks about the fact that, the, that he is the Father and Jesus, they're one. So that was the introduction of what later we determine is the Trinity. Be and now the Spirit is not mentioned in this gospel, but later on Jesus talks about sending the Spirit. So we Christians believe that God is three persons in one being, the Trinity. Now, the disciples didn't know that because that whole idea of the Trinity, one of our doctrines, was really not defined until the Council of Nicaea in the year 325. Can you imagine? It took 300 years for the church to put this in writing. And that's the, f the foundation, by the way, of the Nicene Creed. Because of that, because we believe that Jesus is one with the Father and the Spirit, one with God, do we believe he's the ultimate truth? And we heard it today, the way, the truth, and the life. As I said at the beginning, we don't follow Jesus because he's another good man. Think of the people in your life that you kind of listen to their advice. But they're not God. The advice other people give us is their opinion. They, they might be very wise, but they could also be wrong. Now, that's not the way with Jesus. His advice is not just the advice of another good man, but his advice, his teachings, these are the teachings of God. That's why we follow him. And as a second reading today, he becomes the rock of our salvation. The, 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 the rock, what we, our lives stand on so that we will know our way to God. And that rock is not going to, to uh, crumble. Every, all human beings are looking for a firm foundation. It's Jesus. And we're going through that now with the virus. Before all this happened, we thought our world was solid, didn't you? Our jobs, our neighborhood, our friends, our family. And all of a sudden, that, that kind of starts to shake. That foundation is not as solid as we thought it was going to be. But with Jesus, basing our lives on him, that's a firm foundation that can never be shaken. And Jesus tells us in the gospel, do not be afraid. And we have to hear that over and over again. I'm told that that phrase, do not, do not be afraid, is the most repeated verse saying in Jesus and the whole Bible. And that's why I'm always, I know you're sick of this, folks, but I'm always telling you to read your Bible. Now remember, you don't read the Bible once through and then you're finished. And you, some of it you should never read more than once. But go back and reread it. I'm told that human nature is we have to hear something seven times before it starts to sink in. So as you read your Gospels primarily, read them a little bit every day, but over and over again. I always challenge people because we're going through this uh, pandemic. If, 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 we, if, we, if we would all read our Bibles, as uh, the amount of time we read our Bibles every day would equal the amount of time we listen to the news, whoa, we would really be a great people. Fill your mind with the teachings of Jesus, his love and his care, and that will certainly reassure us not to be afraid, to trust in him as our rock and our salvation. Our mothers teach us a lot of that. And again, no mother is perfect. And I hope your mother gave you what you needed in life. But the one thing that mothers usually give us is advice, and they usually repeat it over and over and over again. Or they will do the same things over and over and over again, hoping that someday we, their children, will get it and then live it and pass it on to others. That's why on Mother's Day, I always go back to this book 
because I think this says it a lot better than I can say it. The book is called Love You Forever by Robert Munch. And it's a Firefly book. It's published by the Firefly Publishing Company in Ontario, Canada. It's available at any bookstore or Amazon.com, etc. Love You Forever by Robert Munch. And if you know the refrain or when you feel comfortable, please join me. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you Well, the baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old. He ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves. He pulled all the food out of the refrigerator. He took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at nighttime, when that two-year-old was really asleep, she opened the door to his room, craw craw crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of the bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always, as long as little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old. He never wanted to come in for dinner. He never wanted to take a bath. And when grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to a zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of the bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby. He grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends. He wore strange clothes. He listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was in a zoo. But at nighttime, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of the bed, and if that great big boy was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby. teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown up man. He left home. He bought a house across town. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got in her car and drove across town to his house. If the lights in her son's house were out, she'd open the bedroom window, crawl across the floor, look up over the side of the bed, and if that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and she rocked him back and forth back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, 
mother got older. She got older and older and older. So one day she called up her son and said, you better come and see me because I'm very old and sick. So her son came to see her. When he came in the door, she tried to sing the song. She sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for all. But she couldn't finish. She was too old and sick. So the son went to his mother, and then he picked her up. He rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then he sang her song. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living. My mommy, you'll be. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the foot of the stairs. Then he went up the stairs into the room where his newborn baby daughter was asleep. And for the first time, he picked her up and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth back and forth. And then for the first time, he sang to her. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for watching the homily on Easter Sunday here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in New Berlin. We invite you to join us any weekend for worship with us, or you can watch us on mystelizabeth.com or on Facebook. Happy Easter. <laughs>